Hey folks, welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith. My name is Angie, and on this channel we discuss how to use AI technology to write fiction. Today is the beginning of a fun new series that I've been impatiently waiting to bring you. We're two and a half months from Halloween, and it is my favorite holiday. I thought we'd stretch our creative muscles and write a short story using Novel Crafter. And while we're at it, I'll try to show you some of the new features that have launched recently. The link for this Notion document, as well as the link to the sample codex that we create during this video, will be in the description below. Now you guys can read the introduction that I wrote, talked about why we're doing this and why you write short stories. We'll look at my table of contents. Right now I'm planning five videos. This is video number one, which is creating the codex and the outline. Before we get into that, let's talk about what I'm writing and, and what your other options are, because you don't have to write what I'm writing. Now, I had actually came up with a list of potential story ideas. The folks in the Byte Writers Guild Discord channel chose the one we're going to be working on, which is called The Ghostly Garden. Now, there was another one that was a really close second. So I went ahead and created that one already. I created the codex. So that one is called The Attic Witch. And that one is actually already available on my website. And you can go ahead and grab that if you want. So you can write The Ghostly Garden. You can write The Attic Witch. Or you can create whatever you want. And just use the same process that I have put together here for you. So let's start talking about the story idea. And a little bit more about the structure. It is a young adult fantasy monster in the house horror story. I'm not a huge fan of horror, but I thought a young adult horror would be okay for me. What monster in the house means is it's actually from Blake Snyder's Save the Cat screenwriting book, and it refers to a specific story archetype. And there are quite a few, I want to say maybe 10 different story archetypes that Save the Cat has. Monster in the House has three elements. So it's got a monster, which is your antagonistic force. You've also got a house, a confined space where your monster is going to hunt the victim, your protagonist or whoever else. And then there is what's called a sin, which is a transgression that invites the monster into the house. With this story, we are going to try to keep our word count between 6,000 and 7,000 words. Let me tell you, I actually started a different one of the stories that had been picked out, the one that I liked the most. I'm already at about 13,000 words, and I'm not even out of Act 1. These stories have an ability to become something massive if you don't go into it without a plan. And our plan is actually to write basically four scenes. My scenes within Novel Crafter tend to run from 1300 to about 1800 words. So that means that if you do the math, you're going to have about four scenes. We're, let's talk about the premise for the story. The ghostly garden, and we have three elements to it. A young botanist is house sitting for her professor and discovers the greenhouse is home to carnivorous plant spirits. So that's one part of it. I also wanted it to have dark fantasy elements to it. So that's part of that YA fantasy. We've got plant magic, nature spirits, and ancestral rituals. I wanted it to have a twist. My twist is that the plants are the transformed souls of the house's previous inhabitants, and the protagonist must choose whether to free or to sustain them. The protagonist is going to have to make a choice. Let's move on down to the prompt that we're going to use, and you can add this to your novel crafter. Come up here and click copy. Go to your novel crafter. Um, you can either go to the story that you're using, or you can come up here to prompts. Come down to new and create from clipboard. I'm actually going to delete this because I already have a copy of this, but I will tell you while we are here, this just reminded me of something. You actually can now archive prompts while you are inside of Novel Crafter. So if you use this, the YIA Dark Fantasy Monster Horror prompt for this project, and then you decide you don't ever want to use it again, you can delete it or you can do what's called archiving it. So if you hit archive, 
it will disappear in a minute. There we go. I had to click on something else and it disappeared. Now I will warn you, I had, I think this morning, 106 prompts in my workshop chat. I archived a ton of them. If you want to get back to them, if you don't, they're, they're not gone. You, all you have to do is come up here to the filter and click is archived. And it'll give you access to all of the prompts that you have put into the archive. If you want to go back, you can either come here and click is archived or you can clear filters. But that's how you get back to your archive prompts. And then if you come back over here, there'll be a spot where you can actually restore the prompt if you decide to use it at a later time. So that was a quick aside, FYI. Okay, now that we've got the prompt added, let's go back to our page here and I will close this back up. So again, that's the chat prompt that I will be using. Also, I, in, instead of doing my normal process of back and forth and back and forth for, uh, I think the last one I did, there was like 80 chats in it. <laughs> it was incredibly long. And yeah, it, it was just really insanely long. I decided to do something a little bit different because you know me, I like to live life on hard mode. And what I did was I had a discussion with the LLM and determined what were the variables that we needed to be able to build this story. And I used the prompting style from Mira Gold to create this short story template. Let me show that to you here. And it's, you can just hit copy here and go from there, but it's actually a little bit easier to read from the bottom. Here we go. So write out the following story concept synopsis, fill in the bracketed information with real time story content using the story idea below. And then this is actually, you delete this out and actually put in the story concept right here. And we'll do that here in a few minutes. But um, it gives you a, a title, tagline, the genre is actually young adult dark paranormal horror, the tone and style. And then we've got the theme here is the fear of the unknown, courage and redemption. Okay. So from there, we actually go into the different elements of the story and we start with world building. And then we talk about the key tropes and motifs. So actually built some of those in as well as symbolism because that it's a monster in the house story. Down here, we're talking about narrative elements. So with the point of view, you can actually decide ahead of time, I would like to do first person or I'd like to do third person. And you can actually make that decision for it and just delete out what you don't want or what you do want. Keep in what you do want, as well as narrative tense. So past tense, present tense. One thing that I've learned from working on my project is that with the present tense, the spell checkers don't like it, especially Grammarly. Grammarly really hates present tense. And so I feel like when I'm working on something in present tense, I'm getting the little line under, under things say, telling me that it's wrong, but I'm like, it's not wrong. It's just Grammarly. So just keep that in mind. So talks about the voice and the style. Then we come down here to character. So we've got a main character and it's going to give us an age, typically 16 to 18 for young adult, personality traits, motivations, goals, flaws, and their backstory. It's also giving us two supporting characters and then it goes into the monster and then the house. So again, monster in the house. And then I have built into it a narrative structure, which is going to be save the cat. So it's got the beat sheet in here. So the opening image, the theme stated, setup, catalyst, debate, break into two, B story, fun and games, midpoint, bad guys close in, all is lost, dark night of the soul, break into three, the finale, and the final image. And it gives it basically where these items should be in the story. We all know that the LLMs are not great at math. So you're going to have to steer it sometimes where you need it to be. But 
Um, and then down here, we've got the storytelling segments, including the pacing, foreshadowing, character depth, twists and turns, and the themes. So yes, I know this thing is completely massive, but I'm using it so we don't have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with the LLM as much. So far, it's working, and I've been really happy with the output of it, and feel free to use this in your projects that aren't short stories, because there is a lot of good stuff here. I did notice that some of the output is a little bit vague, but you don't want to go too deep. This is a short story. I find I have to rein myself in quite a bit, because I am tempted to go into these things. And that's how you end up with a short story that's probably going to be longer than a novel. Okay, so let's go back here. And let me see. Oh, names. So I've actually stopped using the LLM to give me names for my characters. They're just bad. And depending on what you're writing, depending on your genre, it has like what it thinks the name should be, and they're usually all bad. So what we're going to do actually is, here is our premise, and we are actually going to add the names here into the premise. That way, the LLM does not have to come up with any names. It might come up with an extra character name, but we can always fix it later. So we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I've been using a fantasy names generator, and if you come here to real names and come to Americas and come here to English American, that is what I've been using. And I am going to use female names. And we will use Haley Dean. And so what I'm going to do, oops, don't want to be there. I'm going to be here. So a young botanist. And I'll just put her name right here. And it, it comes out folded, so you want to unfold that. Okay. And then we are going to say Madeline Bell is the name of the professor. We'll say she has a female professor. And we will actually paste his plain text fix that. Okay, great. So we have the young botanist, we have her professor who is Professor Madeline Bell, and then she is going to discover that the greenhouse is full of carnivorous plant spirits. That won't go wrong. <laughs> okay, so let's go over here. We're going to go back into a novel crafter, go back to our novels. We've already got the goals ghostly garden set up here. There is nothing in the codex. There is no snippets. There are no chats. It's because I practiced earlier and I deleted them. So yes, I did practice ahead of time to make sure I was going to make a fool of myself. Okay. But before we start doing the chats, there is actually a new feature that is available. They made some changes to where you can actually have it fill in the outline for you. It, it's a little bit weird how it works, but let me show you. I'm going to add one act, two acts, three acts. I'm going to put one chapter here. I'm going to put two chapters here. So remember, we're going to have four total and each one has one scene. So here we go. So we've got one scene, two scene, three, and four scenes. Okay. Just like we talked about in the beginning. Okay. We're going to come here to the chat. We are going to create a new thread. Let's open it up. Let's go and we're going to select the AI that we're going to use. So we'll go here. We'll go to the dev editor. Come here to dark fantasy monster horror. And we're going to use 3.5 Sonnet. Here we are. One thing I learned recently, I'm um, sad to say it took me a while. I didn't realize this was a button. 
But this, where you click right here, is actually a button and you can change and pick another LLM, but it keeps you in the same prompt that you were already in. So it's also here that you can come and you can see the preview, the final prompt. So it's actually uh, going to allow you to see what is sent to the LLM. So you can see if there is something amiss. Okay. Before I paste in the template, I'm actually going to come down here to context and come up here to full novel outline. Now, remember we added in some scenes. So actually we'll come here and we'll look at the preview here. And now you can see that it's got, here is the outline of the book that the author is currently working on. It's got the act one, chapter one, scene one. So it's actually got all of our scenes and there's nothing in our scenes. And it's telling it we have nothing in our scenes yet. But by providing this, we're going to be able to get it to tell us what to put in each of these scenes. So just trust me, it worked when I did it. <laughs> okay, so we'll come over here. Let's grab the template. I'm going to hit copy. Come back over here and I'm going to hit paste. And I'm going to go way back up here. And here is our story idea. I should give myself some space here. And I'm going to come back here. I normally have multiple windows when I do these things. It actually goes a lot faster that way. Okay. So we've got the ghostly garden. I'm just going to put some dashes here because those are like bullets. And here we go. So we're going to go through and we're going to make sure everything is right like we want it. So we've got the YA dark fantasy monster horror developmental editor. We've got Claw 3.5. We have our concept here. We have our template in here. I am going to go in really quickly and I'm going to choose. I just like writing in first person. I, I know a lot of people don't like first person. I apologize, but I do. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in first person. Uh, but I'm going to put it in past tense. Usually when I write things that are young adult, I usually write in present tense. Uh, but for this, I will leave it in past tense. So I've got my choice of point of view and I've got my choice of tense. I deleted out what I didn't want. So here we go. I think we are ready to press the button and hit send. Okay, and so it, it pulled those names that we created into there. It also created an additional character. Okay, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to read through this because it went quite, quite fast. And I also see that right here it says the narrative structure follows the 15 beat outline as provided in the original request adapted to fit the ghostly garden storyline. We are going to tell it to continue but I just want to read through the rest first and make sure there's nothing else that I want to change. So I'm going to put pause for a second and I will be right back. Okay. So I had a chance to take a look through here and I wanted to point out a couple things that it changed on us. I thought it was interesting here under unique elements. It gave us a set of enchanted gardening tools that allow communication with the plant spirits. Uh, I thought that was a little, strange, but okay. Let's come down here. So under symbolism, so you got the plants represent the trapped souls and the unfulfilled desires of the past. And the greenhouse symbolizes the thin barrier between the world of the living and the spirit realm, which I thought was cool. So under the point of view, it went with first person, like we suggested. However, with the choice of tense, it actually changed it back to present tense. So it's actually going to be in present tense. 
I had a feeling that with it being young adult, it actually went in and it changed that. Let's see here. We said that we wanted in a character according to the template between the ages of 16 and 18 and actually gave us a character. Haley is now 22 years old and she is a graduate student, I think it said. Oh, yep. Yeah, graduate student in Bodney. So again, that's another thing. It didn't stick to what we had, but a lot of times when you give it instructions, if it will go outside of what you put there, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. It just depends on what you're trying to do. It doesn't matter to me one way or another to tell you the truth. So now Professor Madeline Bell is our supporting character number one. We also have a supporting character number two named Ethan Clark who is going to be the local gardener and the love interest. And he is also skeptical of the supernatural. You always have to have one. Our monster is our carnivorous plant spirits. And then we've got our house. And it was built by a wealthy botanist obsessed with immortality who conducted experiments blending botany and the occult. I thought that was cool. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to tell it to actually continue and go ahead and give us the 15 beats. Let's see. Okay. So basically to get it to keep going, we just need to tell it to continue and click send. And hopefully it will give us. Okay. It didn't do what it did last time. Okay. Nothing ever goes to plan. But I think we can actually work with this. So what we're going to do is I'm just copying this from uh, the last time I did this. So please use the information above to fill out the outline for the young adult dark fantasy monster in the house short story. So it should look at to the outline and use uh, our outline. So let's go ahead and click send. And there we have it. There are our four scenes. So from here, we should be able to uh, derive our characters. We should be able to figure out our setting and everything else that needs to go into the codex. And we also have here is our outline. Okay. Again, the next step is going to be pulling out the characters and then we'll, we will pull out the, okay. So please give me the book Bible entries should be entries for each of the characters for each character there we go in this story that an AI can use to help write the prose and I'm going to specify I'm going to put in the three characters so we it doesn't try to add in a bunch more that's what happened to me last time as well book bio entries for the three characters in this story that an AI can use to help write the prose. And let's go ahead and go. So we've got Haley, personality, her background, goals, her arc, and her voice. Perfect. We've got our professor, Madeline Bell. We've got a little bit more information about her. And we've got Ethan Clark, who is our gardener. So Let's see if I can extract this codex entry. It doesn't look like it wishes to extract correctly. So I'm going to have to do it the hard way. I'm actually going to pause for a moment and take care of this really quick. And I will be right back. Okay, it took a few minutes, but I went ahead and I created our three characters. So we've got Haley. I have set her as our protagonist, and I've also set up 
her alias to be Haley because the way it's set right now, unless it says Haley Dean, it won't trigger to include it with the AI. So I went ahead and also added Haley as the alias. And then all the information about her, I did add some dashes in here. And this is honestly more for me to be able to see where I would have I had the bullet points in the actual text here in the chat, but it covers her background, her goals, her arcs, her voice, personality, physical appearance, occupation, and the age as well. The other characters, same thing. Uh, Professor Bell is actually a secondary character, and I put in here Professor Bell. I also put in Professor as well. Only do I like to put what their names are or how other people would call them. I also like to put maybe their role as well. If you have a bunch of professors, you wouldn't use that per se. You'd want to specify which professor it is with a name. But since we're doing a short story, uh, I think we're safe. And then over here to Ethan, he is both the secondary character and a love interest. So I went ahead and did that. And we went ahead and put his first name in here. And same information here as the other two characters as well. One thing I've been doing lately, just so it's easier for me to see when I'm talking about my protagonist, I've actually been, uh, actually, I don't want to use purple because I use purple for other stuff. I've been using pink. And then you can come up here and upload a picture if you want. I am not going to do that. I'm one of those boring people who doesn't add pictures to my codex. Next, we are going to work on the setting. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up here to the outline and take a look and see what settings that it mentions here. So let's go ahead and we're going to tell it to you, please give us a book Bible entry for the locations, but I'm going to get a little bit more specific. So I'm not going to say for each of the locations in this story, I'm going to say, so this, we have got the Victorian mansion. So I'm going to say the following locations in this story that an AI could use to help write the prose. And I will put Victorian mansion. Actually, I'll just put Victorian mansion. I also want to have the greenhouse as well as the grounds because it talks about her exploring the grounds. Put a little bit of information to clarify there. Let's see, strange noises coming from the greenhouse, plant moving. Let's have the, let's add a library maybe. How's that sound? Library. Because she's going to be doing some research. Um, mansion. I can't spell apparently. Okay. So, do you read references to botanical experiments? Greenhouse. Okay. Guarding tools. We'll come back to those enchanted guarding tools. We'll need those. Okay. Now this is going to be the biggest one. So the greenhouse comes alive and traps Haley inside. Okay. Confrontation. She does a ritual. Okay. Great. So I think with these four locations, so we've got a, the Victorian mansion, we've got the greenhouse, we've got the grounds, so outside of the mansion, and the library inside the mansion. And I'll put for clarification where Haley, I have to remember how to spell her name, goes to research the mansion's history. Okay. And I will go ahead and click send on this. When I was doing the Attic Witch, I told it to tell me basically any locations that it might need. And it gave me a bunch. So that's why I'm being a, a lot more specific this time as to what I want. And let's see if 
we are able to extract this information. It might snow. We can't. Bummer. Okay. So I will pause the video and I will go and I will create these new entries. Okay. It took me just a couple of minutes and now I have our greenhouse, our grounds, our library, and our Victorian mansion. So we have the size, the structure, the climate, contents, atmosphere, some notable features. And also what I really liked is that it also included some sensory details. So what are you going to hear? What are you going to smell? What are you going to see? Including this one has colorful flowers or strange fruits. So there is some really good detail in these. Instead of it trying to provide us 10 or 15 different locations, telling it how many that we wanted, it actually gave us a lot more detail in the locations that we did ask for. And I do want to remind you, I'm moving quite quickly. Um, and you know, take the time. If you are going to publish this, take the time and go ahead and make changes where you want to make changes. If there's something in here that you don't like, go ahead and change it right back into the chat and say, Hey, this doesn't make sense. Or, Hey, I'd rather do it this way. And we're going to move on to the next thing, which is actually the items. So the object that are in our pros. And I believe the only object is those gardening tools. Let's scroll up a little bit more. And I'm wondering now that I've moved a little bit further along, I'm wondering if our plant spirits should have a character entry or if I should do one in lore. I don't know yet. We're going to leave, we're going to put a pin in that one and come back to that. But I do know we have those gardening tools, enchanted gardening tools right here. Let's ask for uh, a, a book Bible entry for those and uh, learn more about those. I don't think there is any other specific thing here that we need to know about. So please give me a book Bible entry for the enchanted gardening tools that an AI could use to help write prose. Okay. And we'll hit send. Appearance, origin, powers, limitation, sensory details, usage in the story, and a special note. The tools have a mind of their own to some degree and may guide the user towards important discoveries or away from danger. I don't know if I like that. Um, so it includes pruning shears, a trowel, and a watering can. Interesting. Tarnished silver, intricate design. It's got a faint ethereal glow, visible in low light conditions. Okay. I am pretty sure it will not extract this. No, it's going to try to create multiple entries out of that. So I'm going to do it the hard way. Real quick. Okay. So we've got our enchanted gardening tools here. And I actually want to make this change real quick. Enchanted tools. Or tools. There we go. They can be called gardening tools, enchanted tools, or just tools. And then we've got information in here about their appearance, their origin, their powers, 
their limitations, their sensory details. So what happens around them or to the character while using them and how they'll be used in the story. I had a quick think. And I think that I want to put the plant spirits as a character. I'm going to ask to give me a character entry for those. So please give me a book title entry for the plant spirits. I'll put the character of the plant spirits. that an AI could use to help me write the prose. Okay. It might be a little long because I'm asking for one thing and it has a tendency to go overboard, but let's see what it does. Plant spirits. So we've got their appearance, we've got the nature, origins, powers, limitations, personalities, their goals, communication, so how they speak, and they can actually speak through the enchanted gardening tools, their relationship to Haley, and their role in the story. And special notes, so each spirit has a unique personality, and the backstory can be explored, but we're not going to explore the backstory of the individual spirits because this is a short story and that would make it super long. Their plant forms often reflect aspects of their human personalities or fates. That's really cool if we weren't writing such a short story. So something to keep in mind. I will see extract. Yeah, it wants to create 11 different entries. That's not going to work for me. So let's go ahead and let me pop offline for a sec and I will get this set up for you guys. Okay, guys, now we have here our character, the plant spirits. And you know what? We will make them green because they're plants. And then I went ahead, I set them up as our antagonist and I also changed it so it It'll also call it using spirits and then put our description in here. I enjoyed reading through the origin. So it was created through a botched immortality ritual performed by the original owner of the mansion. And it's actually the souls of the family members, servants, and guests who are present during the ritual. Now, I thought that was really, really kind of cool. I almost wish I could change the ending so that the plants win. So if you decide to do this, and you decide to let the plants win, please let me know. I want to read it. I think that would be a lot of fun. Anyway, so one thing I don't know is if there is any lore that we actually need for this story. So um, I, I'm honestly, I'm just going to ask. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that there isn't much. I know if I ask an open-ended question, the LLM tends to go nuts. We'll see. One thing I do want to mention is, remember I said I, I was talking about this special notes section here. I didn't actually include these in my version, uh, but you guys will have access to these chats and you guys are free if you want to go ahead and add the special notes for this one uh, or the enchanted gardening tools if you'd like this information, you want to add it into your codex entries, feel free. I just didn't put it in there because I thought it gave the story too much room to grow. And I'm trying to trying really hard to keep it compact. So let us see. Please give me a book Bible entry for the lore in the story that an AI could use to help write the prose. Let's cross our fingers and hope there isn't very much. And we'll hit send. So we've got lore, the, the historical background, the immortality. 
oh goodness, it's going fast. Immortality Ritual, the Secret Society, the Enchanted Ecosystem, Local Folklore, the Enchanted Gardening Tools. We've actually got them already in there. And the Balancing Ritual, which I think is the ritual that we actually use to get rid of them. Okay, so it's used to free the trapped spirits. Glad I used the word spirit. The magical properties of the plants. Okay. Can we extract it? Yes, we can. Okay. So this is actually going to be lore. And this is going to be lore here. And I'm going to do this and then space emotions and be like, oh, hey, you could have done this and it would have been so much easier. Lore. Lore here. I think we're almost done. I like it when things work. Okay, cool. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this add to, to series codex. I don't want it as part of the series. The series is a bunch of other stories as well and they don't have anything to do with this one so i'm going to go ahead and save my entries and if we come down here now oh look here it is all of our lore is right here so we've got our ritual so i'm actually going to change this and add in just ritual for the nickname i'll put the ecosystem here And I don't know if we really need this one, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it anyway. Historical background. I, again, I don't know if we need this. It does give us the name Archibald Thornwood here. We'll go ahead and leave it there. The immortality ritual. So this is the ritual that he tried to do. And that is what caused them to be created into the plant spirits. We've got the local folklore, magical properties of the plants, and our secret society. Secret society. Here we go. If I need these, I will actually add them directly. I think we are good here. I think we are good with our entries. Let me see if there's anything else that we need. Oh, okay. So next, I want a pitch, a hook, and a premise for my story here. And I'm honestly, I'm just copying from the chat from the Attic Witch. So I don't have to type this out. Save us a little bit of time. Normally, these take me hours to do. So there we go. And can I extract these? There we go. Oh, yep. Yes, we can. Okay, these are going to go under other. And in a little while, I will make my custom categories. And I will assign them to the custom categories. So this is here. Make sure you uncheck the box for add to series codex. Oh, here. Change type for all. I could have fixed it. I could have done it. I knew it. I knew that there was something here to make my life easier. Second guess myself. Okay. And I don't think it grabbed all of the premise. So I'm going to... Oh, hang on. Maybe it's the pitch. Okay. One of them doesn't look like it grabbed everything. So I'm going to double check these. So go ahead and save entries. Yeah, because look here, the premise is like super long. Go down here, premise. Yeah, it only grabbed the first paragraph. So here we go. Here is our premise. That's a really long premise. That's like almost longer than the short story. Okay, and then that should be, the hook should be rather short. There we go. And here is the pitch. It's only one paragraph. So here, that's good. All of this is good. Okay. Now, since we already have the outline, I will actually go back up later and add it into here. And 
We don't have to have our usual scene list because our scenes are actually our chapters. It's a little bit different than when you're doing a much longer story. But I do need to know, I want to know how the AI would describe the genre. So here we go. We'll go ahead and send this. How would you describe the genre of the story to an AI writing assistant? And that's actually going to go young adult, dark paranormal horror. Okay. That is exactly what I needed to know. So I will actually just grab this part here. You can actually put the whole thing, but I like to keep the, the genre short because I actually pull it into one of my prompts. You truly could just give it this whole thing. But so story genre right here, pop that in there. It likes to tell me it's too short. I don't care. I do what I want. Okay. Okay. There it is down here now. And then the next thing I need to do is I need a style guide, pro style guide that I can use to write the story. Please provide a pro style guide that an AI writing assistant can use to help write this short story. And we'll go ahead and hit send. Tone, point of view, descriptive style, pacing, dialogue, atmosphere, scientific elements, horror elements, oh, it goes fast, character development, themes, figurative language, sentence structure, and the vocabulary. So I can actually just grab this whole thing. One thing I will uh, caution you about is using numbers in anything if it isn't related to beats or chapters. Don't use any kind of numbers. Um, when the LLM sees numbers, it thinks it needs to do things in a specific order. When we're talking about the style guide, it doesn't have anything to do with numbers. Just be cognizant of that. You definitely want to avoid using any kind of numbers unless it's something that you want it to do in a specific order. So I don't think this will extract. No, it, it won't. It wants to do 13 different entries. So I'm going to pop off for a second and I will do that. And I'll also grab some water because I've been talking to close to an hour at this point. Okay. So now we have our prose style guide in here. And one thing I wanted to point out to you is here, this point of view, we actually don't need this section because this is actually built into Novel Crafter. So let me show you, I'm going to go ahead and delete this out and I'm going to come up here and click on novel settings. So this is actually where I signed it book number and I gave it the book cover here. I'm going to come here to writing. And we're going to do it said present tense and first person. We can set that here. If you actually are already in a different language. So I spoke to someone last week, week before last, who was actually speaking in German and was going to be writing in German. So she can actually come in here and change the language to German. And so we also can set our character here. Haley is going to be the protagonist. So everything's going to be for her point of view. So I'm going to head and set this here. And so that's just a quick way to set the defaults for the story. If you're doing something that has changes from maybe a romance where it's half of them are from the heroine and half of them are from the hero, then you get to go and do that the hard way. But at least here you can go ahead and set the default. And then here you can overwrite this on a per scene basis. So trust me, I've done this. It's a pain. So we'll go back here. Here's our plan. We have to go in and add these things, uh, which we'll actually be doing uh, one at a time as we write uh, the scenes. Um, I think the last thing that needs to be done, and I will actually do that on my own, is to add 
uh, the outline, but I will come in here and I will do uh, here. I'll come to create my custom categories. And so I want story info, story info. I usually make blue story is actually the tag that I want to use for anything that is uh, related to the story information. And you will see that here in a moment, how I do that. And then we also need to have uh, our outline. Again, I'm not going to use a scene list in this one because the outline really is the scene list. And I like to make those purple. If there was a framework, which I don't have a framework in this one because I used the template, I usually make those green. So that's why I, I made the plant spirits green. Okay. I like to be fancy. Okay. Oh, my associated tag for this one is actually outline. So when I put outline, it will make it purple or move it to the purple section. So let's go ahead and close this. And I will go down here. These are all considered others is the type of entry. But when I add the tag, okay, this one is story. See now it's blue. The pitch is also story. The premise is story. Like I said, the outline will be purple because, and then I'll put in here under the tag label, it'll be categorized as outline. So that's about it for this part of the process that for this video, I will tell you these usually take probably if I'm doing a normal story, uh, a normal sample codex can take me up to four hours uh, for me to create this. And then after I create the codex, then I have to go and create all the other things that allow you to be able to add them to your novel crafter. So that is what I will be working on next. So you guys can see these, get them added to your codex before we start writing. That is the plan. If you guys have any questions, please reach out. I am more than happy to answer any kind of questions, either via email. You could also can send me a message through our Byte Writers Guild Discord, which is, link is right there. It's also right there. So if you're on Discord, go ahead and reach out there too. Well, I think that is everything for this first video. And so, yeah, I'm excited to write the ghostly garden and can't wait for you guys to share your stories with me. I think they're all going to be amazing. So have a fantastic day and happy writing.